we're here with the Lorenzo Walker Technical College and today we're going to be talking on the function of a battery switch, how to set it up, and why you might want to have one aboard your vessel. So, the basic function of a battery switch is to turn the batteries on and off. There's really not that much more to it. So, we've got one mounted here. We've also got one disassembled. <clears throat> so, we took apart a battery selector switch that had some water in it to see what actually makes this thing work. And you can see here that you've got plates. The plate is connected to uh, a post or a terminal here, and by connecting, rotating it, you form connections between the plate and the post and the common here. We're gonna test the battery selector switch now for continuity. This would be the equivalent of position one right here. You're attached to you're touching or making contact with uh, post number one and the common. You'll test it on the continuity setting. So we've got continuity. This should be reading zero. And that's what we wanna see when we're testing the switch. So we use the common as our positive. And we've got a good connection. But in position one, we shouldn't get anything on post number two, and we're not. Now we'll switch it to all. And you can see you're making contact with the common and both battery terminals. And to test it, terminal one, terminal two. Spinning it all the way around, making contact with the common and number two. Good connection, no connection, meaning battery one is shut off. Most people are gonna have their batteries wired so that battery number one is your starting battery, and battery number two is gonna be your house battery. House meaning all of your other systems, your GPS fish finder, your VHF radio, your running lights are all gonna be running off battery number two. And that's normally going to be a deep cycle battery designed for producing a low amperage over a long period of time versus your starting battery, which is going to produce high amperage to start the engine, actually turn the engine over, but only for a short period of time. This only needs to turn for three to five seconds in order to get the battery started. So we're going to show you how to make the connections in the back. On the back of your battery switch, you're going to have three posts or terminals. The only thing that's going to con get connected to these are going to be your positive uh, wires. Battery one, it will be going to post one. Battery two will be going to post two. And the positive coming from the engine will get attached to the common terminal. So one of the things to be careful of when you're making your attachments, and you may want to get a close-up of this, is to make sure that the terminal end isn't contacting your mounting screw on either side because that will cause a short. And you also want to make sure that this isn't coming around 
and potentially touching there, or then you're actually bypassing the switch. Two of the standards for uh, making connections and rigging boats are going to be the American Boat and Yacht Council and NEMA, which is the National Marine Electronics Association. And that's what we're using as the basis for these. So with your battery wire connectors, you'll see that a flat washer shall be immediately below a split washer and the nut. Another thing to keep in mind is that when you are connecting, especially on the house battery where you're connecting multiple wires or cables to the battery post, you only want to have a maximum of four on the post itself. So here we've got an example. You always want to put the, uh, the thickest wire or the, the lowest gauge wire on the bottom followed by your additional connectors attached to the battery post. And again, no more than four per post. One more thing to consider is when you're talking about uh, number six American wire gauge and larger shall not be connected with wing nuts. So this is number four American wire gauge or four gauge wire. And this would be an incorrect setup because this is smaller than a six gauge wire, so you shouldn't be using a wing nut on here. You should be using a regular nut. So you've got your three positive terminals coming into the battery switch. Now it's time to connect your negative leads. You've got your negative lead coming from your engine going to go to your starting battery. Then you're going to hook up the negative wire from your house battery to your starting battery. Again, flat washer, lock washer, and the nut. So the remaining thing to do is hook up your negative lead from the engine itself because this is gonna be drawing the most current. We'll go on the bottom, and now we're gonna attach on the top. In order for the all to work so that you're actually drawing current from both batteries, you're gonna hook up the two batteries together in parallel. And the way that you do that is by running a negative black wire from the negative lead of one battery to the negative of the other battery. If you were to go to the positive, that would be hooking them up in series, which would change your voltage from 12 volts to 24 volts. That's not what we want to do. So we're going to connect here. And by doing so, basically what you've done is turn this into one big battery. In conclusion, we've wired our positives into your battery selector switch. You can wire it however you want. Whichever battery you want to be the starting battery, you'll just hook up battery one to terminal one, battery two to terminal two. And when you're in the all position, you'll be drawing current from both batteries.